What's quackalacking guys, I'm a Dark Quack here and welcome to a, a pretty in-depth trading video of how we can make coins during the start of this FIFA with our early access and just leading up in the next few days until the game is actually released. If you follow the Trade to Glory series then this is the account. Um, there were two episodes that we recorded from that but that got deleted on the PC so you'll never see that. So this will be an update there as well. So the team that we have is this. We've got tons of great players, including the SBC Charisma. We've got two whole things worth of transfers that we've bought. And we've got a club that's completely stacked with gold players. And the way that we've managed to do this is not with spending any FIFA points, not with any ridiculous pack luck, but just jumping through some normal trading methods that work particularly well during the start of a new game. So we're going to start off talking about squad builder challenges. Now, when you first come onto your FIFA, there's going to be one squad builder challenge that you can do. And the first one that's there is let's get started. Now, let's get started is a free part SBC. And all you have to do is just use the bronze players that you get when you start up the game to complete it. The first one needs one goalkeeper. The second one needs three players and they can literally be any three in the correct position. And the third challenge requires four players. And you're just going to have two from the same nationality and the other two have to be different. It's so simple. It gives you untradeable bronze packs, basically. But that's what we've got to do to unlock the rest of them. Secondly, you're going to want to jump off into the kickoff SBC. Now, the kickoff SBC, again, is a stupidly easy one. There's three parts to the challenge. You need a bronze squad for the first one, silver squad for the second one, and a gold squad for the third one. You should be able to complete the bronze one with pretty much just the players in your club. The silver one you can do now or you can come back to when you pack a few more silver players. And the gold one, just use any league, pick any 11 players from that league that fit in. I'm not sure if there's any rares or not, but just choose one league, bid on them all for 300, 350 coins max, and you get a premium gold players pack for it. So you're guaranteed to make profit from that SBC. Once we've finished with that one, we want to jump into the hybrid leagues and hybrid nations part of the SBC. So if we start with the hybrid nations, for all of these challenges, you're going to need a different amount of nationalities included in the squad builder challenge. So for the first three, you can complete them without using any loyalty. So that means you don't need any pack pooled players or any players that you play 10 games with. You need the first challenge, four different nationalities, the second challenge, six different nationalities, and the third challenge, eight different nationalities. So this sounds a lot more complicated than it needs to be. And if we jump in here just to take a look, you can see them all in here. Now the quads one, the first one, you just need four, like we mentioned before, maximum of three from the same nation, and then your ratings and everything. And it's the same with all of them to a degree. The way you get around this and make it so easy to do, just pick one league, and then split up the nationalities. So for example, we go for Premier League here, we have four different nationalities being French, Spanish, English, and Welsh, and then we just build the squad. Simple. The same with this one, six nationalities. You can choose any league you want, again, Premier League, Bundesliga, anything that's gonna be the cheapest way to do it. Same with it takes eight, and then by the time we got into National Pride, we're using the same logic. Just use one league, but split the nationalities across. The only difference with this National Pride one is you do need 100 team chemistry. So while you're completing the other ones and opening these packs, if you can, just save a few players from the league that you choose to use for the National Pride one because they'll have the loyalty built into them and it will make completing it possible without actually having access to the game or farming the loyalty on your players. After that, we jump onto the hybrid leagues. And for this one, you need to use exactly five leagues in the first one, seven in the second, nine in the third, and exactly 11 leagues in the fourth one. This is the same as the nationality one. The only difference is we just want to use the same nationality for all players in the teams and just change up the leagues. It's so simple to do. So for example, for the squad goals, one, we're just still on the biggest one so you guys get what I mean. We'll use a full team of 11 players, all from, say, Brazil, and we'll just have 11 different leagues in there. That would complete that requirement. Six rare players minimum. So you know that you've just got to spend a little bit more getting those. And again, we need 100 chemistry only on the third challenge. So the first three you can do without any loyalty. The last one, just make sure you keep one or two of those pack pooled players that you can slot into your club. 
I think you do need a position change on the hybrid nations on the last one. They use left wing back and right wing backs. So you might need to grab yourself a left back to left wing back and a right back to right wing back card. But they're cheap enough and they're not going to hurt the profit. The rewards you get for them, you get a 55k rare mega gold pack or whatever it's called for completing all four in each of them. So you can have two of those, two mega packs just tons of packs from completing them. You're guaranteed to make profit as long as you're bidding and just spending the bare minimum that you have to on the cards that you need. You've also got the League SBC. So as you can see, we completed the Super League one on this account. I'm not advising you do that now because prices have risen massively since we did it. But if you were to jump into it and have a look at the teams, stuff like Galatasaray that returns a Prime Electrum Players Pack, a Premium Gold Players Pack for Fenerbahce, and I think there was one or two more in here. Just look for ones that have got a Galatasaray. Uh, I mentioned Galatasaray. Besiktas, sorry. That was the other one I was thinking of. Look through them. Find ones that have decent rewards. Build a concept team. Work out how much it's going to cost you to actually complete it. And then just complete it if you can make profit on it. You know what these packs involve. So just work out what the worst case scenario of a discarding the whole pack would be. And then try and complete it for the same kind of cost. You've got a very similar thing with the second league here. But based on what I've seen, this one seems to be a bit more inflated. We've completed one of them, and the rest of them that have the decent packs attached, ah, double check the prices, but they were a bit expensive when I had a look at those. The final one to have a look at would be the League and Nation Hybrid. Now, you're going to need loyalty for most of these, so you're not going to have enough pack pool players. Well, it's very unlikely that you will. So you're going to need to either play games with the team, or you're going to need to use the dashboard method. So it's probably best to save that one for when you have full access to the game. So if you're on PC or Xbox, it's possible. If you're on PlayStation, have a look at it, but just wait to build it. So say you've done all your SBCs or you don't want to do the SBCs. There's tons of other methods we can use. The first one being a bronze pack method. So what the bronze pack method involves is it's very simple. You just jump into the bronze packs. You open them and you sell all the contents in them. A lot of the players will sell. The squad fitnesses will sell. Contracts you can keep and use yourself. And the bronze players that don't sell, you can keep in your club. And if any marquee matchups or other league SBCs come up, they will have some kind of value throughout the year. It takes time. It requires you to have your transfer list full of these bronze cards and we list them constantly. But bronze pack method is a fantastic way to earn coins. Probably not quite as effective in the early stages of FIFA as it is a little bit later on. So if you can use these other methods, they're much better to start off with. So SBCs and bronze pack method aside, let's get into something a little bit different. So we've got two options here and they're very common methods and they're very easy to do. We're going to just take a random, um, whoops, we're going to take Debushi. He is a fullback who I think still plays in the Premier League. He's still Arsenal, he didn't go away in the end. He's going for, if we have a look, I'm guessing about 800 coins maybe. Yeah, he's selling for 800 coins. So if we were to choose to snipe him, we could set our filters up to say 1,000 coins. And then we can see there's only one there for 900. So we know that he sells for about 1,000 coins. So if we set our max price up to the top, our max buy now to 900, which is what we're happy to buy them for. Because we'll be selling them at 1,000. And then we just search, we get no results. The way sniping works is you keep changing the search filters. That means that the search that you're doing keeps getting refreshed. So anything new put onto the market will show on your search. And anything that we find for 900 coins or cheaper, we would simply try and snipe as fast as we can and then relist up for that 1,000 coins so that we can make a profit. Choosing your players for this is very important because if you choose a player that too many people are using, then you're not going to win any of the searches that you find. And if you choose a player that's too high rated, then you're not going to get many research, uh, many results Sorry, when you're searching for it. As you can see, we've got a 78 rated player and we're getting very, very few results searching for just 100 below. So it's so important that you choose your filters wisely when you're attempting this method and you get to a stage where you're picking a player that isn't actually being chosen by many others, really. I'm just going to check to see. OK, that's why they are selling for a thousand quite quickly. So we could have gone a little bit higher. Say 1,000, yeah. We could... Oh, damn. Okay, there we go. That's the perfect example I wanted you guys to see. We could have got that one for 450 if we hadn't stopped researching... Uh, sorry, resetting the filter. And then sold it on for 1,000 coins. So we could have made 550 coins off just one player here. Debushi is a pretty poor example because for a fullback, you want them to have pace. He's got 69 pace. 
He's never going to be in massive demand. Hence, a lot of people will probably just quick sell this guy or just stash him in the club and forget about him. But you get the gist of how sniping works. The other option we have is, now we know that he sells for 1,000 coins, we can set our max price up for 850. That will show us any of him that has got a max bid of 850 on him. Then what we can simply go through and do is bid 850 coins on every one of him that we can for as far as our coins will take us. This method is simply called mass bidding. So we've chosen a player who's not in massive demand. Uh, sorry, not in massive demand for snipers and mass bidders. And we've just gone through and bidded on hundreds and hundreds of them, or as many as we choose to do. Then it's just a case of leaving it be and then coming back and seeing how many of them you've won and relisting your winning ones. If you're using this method, it's an awful idea to just say use Debushi. What you want to make sure that you've got is multiple players that you're searching for. So say Debushi is one of them. We'd go on there, bid on a bunch of those. Then we jump over and we change the player up to say John Stones and we go through and bid on all of those that we could afford. Then we change the player up again to another one and we keep rinsing and repeating until we got to a stage where we could come onto our transfer list here, check how many of them we've won, list those up and then start it again with Debushi from the start again. As you can see, we've been outbid on two of them already. A thousand coins here and 900 coins here. So we know he sells for a thousand, so we could happily bid a uh, 900 coins on each of them and guarantee that we still make a profit. But I'm just using it as an example. So you guys can work out the little bits and bobs that you want to change on there. So during the start of FIFA, we've got those four key methods already. We've got the squad builder challenges, the bronze pack method, sniping players and mass bidding on players. One final thing that I want to show you guys that has been stupidly effective for myself is these league SBCs. And I'm not talking about completing them, but I'm talking about finding some value within them. So if we have a quick look at, just to show you all guys what I mean, the Super League here. And the first team is called Akhisaras Poor or something like that. So let me just jump into a squad and just show you the value of what I mean. So when you complete one of these teams, you need 11 players from that team filling each of the positions. If we jump onto Super League here, there we go, export, concept players, and we search for centre-backs. Now we know that these teams have at least two centre-backs. This team in particular has two slots where they need the centre-back role filled. If we have a quick look here, you can see that they only have two centre-backs. That's absolutely incredible for us because now we know that when people complete this, they're going to need to use at least one of these players. If we have a look on the transfer market, the cheapest one for this guy is currently 2,400. And the cheapest one for the second guy is currently about 4,500, well, 3,500. So we're looking at about 2,000 to 4,000 coins between them. It's always worth having a list of these players that you can cycle through over and over again, just double checking, sniping them, picking them up. We did this quite early on, as you can see. We picked them up for 200 coins here. We got him as a first owner. This guy cost us 650. Uh, this guy cost us 250. So we're looking at about two to 3,000 coins profit on each of these cards that we've picked up here. And it's exactly the same thing you guys can do. Just look through the teams, find players that are distinctively needed for each position on the squad, and then just go through and pick them up on bids. We're making about two to 3,000 coins for each player. I'm showing you this because it's been so effective. Now the players I showed you aren't necessarily gonna work because if a load of people watch this video and they try using those same players, then none of us are gonna win them. That's why doing your own research is so important. Have a look through the team, find situations where they have a position that only one player can fill. Maybe it's a left back and they've only got one left back. Maybe it's a striker and they've only got one striker or two strikers in a two striker formation. Use your brain, use your research, do it all and you will find potential profit within this method. You can even snipe these players if you want. Set your filters up like we did before and just keep refreshing till you find one. We picked a couple of this guy up. He's a left back. He's the only left back available for Antelasa support or however you pronounce it. We got him for 300 coins. We sold him for 10,000 coins. The next day we had a look on the market and we won this guy on a bid for about 3,500 coins. Now I knew he would sell for about 10,000 coins normally. So we picked him up for three and a half thousand. I listed them about four times for between eight and 10,000. He wasn't selling. So I just thought, okay, fine. I'll sell him for 6,200, take two and a half thousand coin profit and be happy with that. It's just rinse and repeat with these methods. These are definitely the strongest ways to start collecting your coins and growing those coin totals before release. These are the ones that have worked the best for me. 
The last one we're going to have a look at is just the general increase in prices with players as it gets nearer to release. So I'm going to use an example here and we are going to go on to Firmino. So Firmino was someone that we got on our reward packs on pretty much the first evening, I think it was, when FIFA was released. He was selling for about 9, 10,000 coins. And I decided to keep him simply because I wanted to use him in my squad. Now, if we're having a look down this list here, the cheapest one now is about 19,000. That's a huge increase in just a couple of days. The players will continue to rise. This is the great part. Because people are getting more and more coins, they can slowly afford better and better players. So come release, when everybody can jump onto the game, they can spend a ton of FIFA points. These players will hold a lot higher value than they did initially. What we want to be doing is looking around for players that are currently quite cheap or that we feel are cheaper than they perhaps should be. PlayStation players, you've got the biggest advantage here because there's no early access for you guys. So the market is still incredibly cheap. There's a lot of growth available. Rudiger was about 10,000 the other day. Now they've increased his price cap and he's about 15,000 to 20,000 coins easily. He's a centre-back in the Premier League. He's got really good pace, stats, defensive, physical is absolutely fine. He will be in demand. He's also German. He links brilliantly into hybrids if you want. Just monitor prices, see when things are starting to rise, and then get them early and sell them upon release. The final thing, I forgot about this one till now, is the team of the week investing. So team of the week investing, most people think of it as we've just got to pick up team of the week cards. But the other way of thinking about this is when a player gets a team of the week card, their normal non-informed card goes out of packs for a week. So they're unpackable. Maratta is my prime example here. So during the game, he scored a goal today. We picked up two copies of him for 23,000 for one and 22,000 for the other. He then went on to score a hat trick, guaranteeing himself a team of the week card. His max price range is currently 30000 and that is the only reason he's not got more expensive yet. But as you can see, he's easily selling for 28000 So we've made 5000 coins on both our cards already. When the game's released and he goes out of packs, hopefully that'll increase his price range, and then we'll be able to sell him for a lot more. This tactic works with any real-life football game. Just make sure you react fast to it. Anyway, guys, going to wrap up the video there because I've done a lot of talking, probably blabbered on a load of rubbish for a while now. But hopefully this will help give you guys an idea on some trading methods that work really well at the moment. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below or even easier, just tweet and I'll leave my Twitter down in the comments below as well. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you drop that like if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you next time.